Greetings, folks, and welcome back to my little corner of the library. Stephen King writes in the afterword to The Gunslinger, the first in his Dark Tower epic, that he was toying with the idea of trying a long romantic novel, embodying the feel, if not the exact sense, of the Browning poem. Now, the poem he's referring to here that he drew inspiration from is Robert Browning's Child Roland to the Dark Tower Came, first published in 1855. But Browning himself was just referencing an even older line, Shakespeare in this case, King Lear. Child Roland to the Dark Tower came. His word was still, fi fo and fum, I smell the blood of a British man. Now, in King Lear, the character who says this line is just spouting drivel, nonsense. He's trying to convince the other characters around him that he's mad. But as it turns out, there's a lot more to Child Roland than just Shakespearean madness. Now, Shakespeare's reference to Child Roland was meant to be nonsense, drivel. Although, in reality, it's a reference to an even older ballad, one which was most famously recorded in 1890 by folklorist Joseph Jacobs. Now, the ballad is about a young knight named Roland, who is off on a quest to rescue his sister, Bird Ellen, who walked around a church, Widdershins, or counterclockwise, and was subsequently kidnapped by the king of Elfland. Roland is instructed by the wizard Merlin, to behead anyone he speaks with on his quest, and not to eat or drink anything in Elfland until Bird Ellen is rescued. Armed with a sword that never misses, Roland eventually finds Bird Ellen inside a green hill in the hall of the King of Elfland, who enters the scene with a loud cry of fee fi fo fum I smell the blood of a Christian man. Roland is victorious, but shows the king mercy in exchange for Bird Ellen, as well as his two older brothers, who were themselves kidnapped by the king when they tried to make rescue attempts. The king wakes the brothers up from their enchanted slumber by anointing the ears, eyes, nose, lips, and fingertips of the brothers with a red ointment. And everybody gets up and goes home. Now, Joseph Jacobs was a very well-known folklorist in the, in the latter part of the 19th century. He published several volumes of updated fairy tales and ballads, as well as penning several more scholarly works on the history of these areas. It is in his article on Child Roland, published in the magazine The Folklore Quarterly in June of 1891, that he tells us of his connection to the tale, a little bit of history behind it, as well as several ways in which he may have adjusted it a bit. Jacobs relates that he got the tale from an earlier work published in 1806 by another folklorist named Robert Jameson. Jameson tells us in his collection of popular ballads and songs that he got the story from a country tailor in his village who told it to him when he was only seven or eight years old. In the version he wrote, Jameson has the tale of Child Roland fitting into Arthurian legend, with Roland being the son of Arthur and Guinevere, and his sword that never misses being Excalibur. It's also telling that Jameson would make no mention of a dark tower. Jameson also tells us that the only names that were included in the original story told to him by the country tailor were that of Roland, Bird Ellen, and Merlin, and that the others, Arthur, Guinevere, and Excalibur, were added by him, as he says, upon the authority of the locality given to the story by the mention of Merlin. So it appears that Jameson himself, in 1806, is the first one to really insert the tale of Child Roland into the Arthurian canon. So how old is the story? Now, Jacobs was writing in 1890, but he says he was referencing Robert Jameson writing in 1806, who says that he heard the tale when he was seven or eight, so probably sometime in the mid-1700s, but the story is referenced by Shakespeare, so it's gotta be even older than that. Jacobs has a couple of theories as to this point. Jacobs, in his article, goes on to point out that the unction of the extremities, the king's anointing of the brothers to wake them up, is actually derived from an older ritual from the Roman Catholic Church. This, he says, points to the story's existence while England was still a Roman Catholic country, that is, prior to the 16th century. The use of the word child is also indicative of being earlier than Elizabethan, child being a word for a young or an inexperienced knight, but it's primarily a medieval term. Also telling is the use of the words fee, fi, fo, and fum, for while today it's part of the Jack and the Beanstalk legend, Jacobs believes that it references a story older than Shakespeare, older than Elizabethan times, and as evidence he uses not only Shakespeare's usage of it, which was in 1606, but also its appearance in a play by George Peel called The Old Wives' Tale, which was first seen in 1595. 
Thus, the two mentions within so close a time period would seem to indicate that they had a common origin that was very well known within England at the time these both came out. Jacobs, in his version in 1890, removes the Arthurian bits of the story, but adds in that the Hall of the King of Elfland is not in just some nameless hill, but actually is found inside the Dark Tower. Another addition by Jacobs was drawing on the parallels between the King of Elfland's Green Hill and the Green Hills and old folk stories that belonged to the Good People, or Fairy. And he has Bird Ellen's kidnapping taking place at the hands of Fairy, working for the King of Elfland. So what of Browning and his poem? As it turns out, that's actually the most straightforward bit in this whole mess. Writing in 1852, first published in 1855, Browning had heard the Shakespeare line and just wrote a narrative based around it, with no mention of the older ballad. Other than Roland's name, and perhaps the idea that he was on a quest of some sort, there are no parallels between Robert Browning's poem, Child Roland to the Dark Tower Came, and the original ballad of Child Roland. Browning had simply heard a nonsense line from Shakespeare, and wrote a poem based around it. The poem does make mention of other knights having gone before Roland looking for the Dark Tower, and hints at a very deep, complicated backstory that took place before the poem opens. And it's theorized that because of this, Browning was actually making allusion to the Arthurian bits of the, the story, although really that's all open to reader speculation. So the timeline looks like this. A long time ago, there was a story about Child Roland, a ballad, possibly Scottish or English. This ballad is referenced by Peel in The Old Wives' Tale in 1595, and in 1606, Shakespeare in King Lear wrote Child Roland to the Dark Tower Came, a line which Browning would turn into his poem unrelated to the original ballad. In the meantime, Richard Jameson would take the original ballad in 1806 and add in a few Arthurian bits. Jameson's version would then be reworked by Joseph Jacobs in 1890. He would add the Dark Tower because of Browning, but remove the Arthurian bits. Finally, in 1970, Stephen King would take inspiration from the Browning poem, as well as aspects of the Arthurian connection, and craft his Dark Tower epic. Well, that's all I've got for you today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want more information on Child Roland, be sure to check out English Fairy Tales by Joseph Jacobs, as well as his article on the history of Child Roland that appeared in Folklore Quarterly. You can also check out Robert Jameson's collection of popular ballads and songs, as well as George Peel's The Old Wives' Tale, and I'll leave links to all of these things down in the description below. As always, you can find more odd, interesting, and unusual stories over at bookwormhistory.com. We just put a piece up about New York City's explosive disposal of the sunken SS Fort Victoria, so be sure to check that out. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day, and thanks for stopping by.